Well, good afternoon. It's Wednesday at noon, which is our traditional time here to have our weekly busy webinar. My name is Trigvi Olson. I am the director of Buzz Development here at BusyWeb. Today we're going to be talking about how to build a great e-commerce engine to make you a lot of money and to uh, move a lot of products through your site. So just as a, a couple of things to, as we get started, I want to tell you that you have the opportunity to ask questions. If, you, if you're interested in doing so, on the right-hand side of your page, you'll be, able to see, uh, you'll be able to see a blue bar that says answer questions by selecting ones from the list. Our friend Obed has already <coughs> participated by asking a question. However, he didn't actually ask a question. He's just saying hello to me and being a good friend. So shout out to Obed. While we work on this, I encourage you as we go through this to, if you have questions, please by all means ask, uh, ask away so that we can get started. So uh, as we're working on making sure that we've got everything online, I've got my faithful assistant, Jenna, with me. Jenna, how are we doing? And can we actually see anything yet? Uh, looks like actually the screen just disappeared for me. <laughs> I'm looking at the little this is a B icon. Super duper. Well, let's try and figure this out a different way. Let's punch a few buttons in the background. That's why we have faithful assistance so that we can make sure that everything works at a hundred percent. So we go. uh, we're good. We're up and running. Yes. I see the busy webinar slide. Excellent. Well, fantastic. We'll go ahead and get started. I'd encourage you as you have questions, feel free and put them on uh, the uh, bar on the right. Jenna will be happily interrupt me to make sure that all your questions get answered. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we'll go over a little bit about us. If you're not familiar with who BusyWeb is and who we are as a group, I'll be happy to tell you a little bit about them. But then we're really going to get into the meat and potatoes of what we're going to be doing today, which is talking about how to build and how, best practices for having an e-commerce website. We'll talk about the challenges of marketing as a business to consumers through the web, how to use your website effectively to make sure that you can ha and have the infrastructure to really generate money through the, through the web. We'll talk about features that every single e-commerce site needs, and we'll talk about integrating your site with social media. Slide has disappeared again. Excellent. The slide has disappeared. <laughs> so let's make sure that when we get started, let's go here, and let's just share everything and see if that does it. So we're gonna unplug that. We're going to move this around. We're going to bang a little on to make sure that that kicks in and we'll take it from take it from there how about that do we actually see something that looks like an agenda uh, give me a second there's a little bit of a lag I'm still not seeing an agenda, no. <laughs> still not seeing an agenda. Well, this is why we uh, have friends like Obed out there who can wait patiently as we uh, get started. How about now? Yes. Super. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Here's a little bit about who we are as, as people. We were <coughs> Busy Web was founded by Dave Meyer, who's up uh, on vacation this week, so I get to fill in for him, in uh, 1999. Since uh, Dave started as one person, we've grown to a team of 14 people. Uh, we're based here in lovely Champlain, Minnesota, and you can see some pictures of our Hive offices here. We have educational uh, opportunities that we offer every week. If you'd like to come and see these in person, you can certainly do so. Uh, and we have clients all, literally all over the world, from Germany to India to all over the contiguous 48 United States. What exactly do we do? Well, we are, and uh, are we moving along, Jenna? It uh, doesn't look like it, no. It looks like we're seeing the screen that you're seeing in PowerPoint but I'm not actually seeing the slides move. Perfect. Let's see what we can do about flipping those around and play for current slide. And 
So we see the PowerPoint, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So let's see what we can do about flipping displays. Uh, technology. Ah, technology indeed. <laughs> yep, uh, so, like Obed says, we're just seeing the entire PowerPoint application, so not actually the presentation. Got it. I think what I need to do then is I need to share my whole screen. And present to everyone. We should see that. And then if I play from the current slide, Jenna, let me know when we've got what we do up and running. All right. Just gotta give it a few minutes while we wait for my screen to catch up with what you just said. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, it's not that interesting of a screen, so I'll talk a little while we while we get caught up. What we do here at BusyWeb, we are a full service digital marketing agency. That means we do everything from creating logo designs, creating effective offline marketing pieces to online marketing displays, like building a great website, which we'll talk about today, and uh, digital marketing strategies that make sense. Things like SEO, things like content marketing, things like pay-per-click, things like social media uh, marketing, and we actually host websites as well. A big component of what we're going to be talking about today, which is why I brought Jenna in, is we're going to be talking about social media integration. If you'd like to follow us on social media, you can reach us at, on Twitter. You can see an example of our Twitter page there. And you can see uh, our Google, Google Plus page. You can see our Facebook page. And uh, you can even see uh, what our LinkedIn company page looks like. So I'd encourage you as we work along that you make sure that you see that you uh, follow us on social media. If you know somebody who enjoys this kind of webinar, I, it's, this will be available on YouTube right after we're done speaking, so I'd encourage you to share it along with. So here's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about e-commerce websites, what what the purpose of them are, what the value of them are, and how exactly can you create a, an e-commerce website that really helps drive money into your pocket. So to begin with, what exactly is an e-commerce website? Simply put, an e-commerce website is a website that acts as a storefront. I'm going to say it a couple of times that I encourage you to think of a website as an actual storefront. If I go across the street to the donut shop and I, and I want to purchase a couple of donuts, in order to do so, I'm going to be walking in. There's going to be displays and colorful displays, and there's going to be a way in which I can purchase some of those goods. Uh, sometimes I purchase them just a few too many times, and I, uh, there's going to be an exchange of money. So when we talk about what a website is, a website truly is your storefront, an e-commerce engine is your cash register. So you can display products and actually take people's money and have a relationship with them online. First, before we get into what exactly uh, are the best practices for e-commerce search engines, I thought it'd be important to talk first about what exactly every website needs. And this is something that we practice here at BusyWeb. This is what we recommend for our clients. And these are the five basic tenets of everything that we do. First and foremost, uh, customer-facing design. What do I mean by that? It means that I can create something that I think is really neat and really cool, but chances are good I'm going to already have chosen to buy from me. That's why I went into business. So having a design that your customers are interested in, your customers find engaging, and the content that they find engaging, maybe it's what you find engaging, maybe it's a little different. It's important to focus exclusively on the customer. Second, the mobile-friendly design is becoming increasingly more crucial as we go on from MobileGeddon last April. Any, any, search, any website that has the ability to be thought of as mobile responsive will get ranked and therefore have some searchability functions on Google. If your website is not mobile responsive, what that means is Google will not rank your website for searches on a mobile device. 
And some of you might be thinking, oh man, that's not really that big of a problem because uh, I don't know, I, nobody's going to find me on a mobile device. Statistically speaking, in this day and age, about 80% of all searches on Google and search engines are done on a mobile device. So if you have any shot at becoming found through your website and through your digital marketing techniques, it's crucial to be mobile responsive. Third, you want to make sure that every, everything on your website has relevant calls to action. What exactly, exactly is a call to action? Does that mean buy uh, a big button that says buy now or buy today or else? No, what it means is you want people to do things. You want them to actually take an action. You want them to click here. You want them to share this. You want them to go deeper into your website to learn more things. And you want to make that clear what exactly the action you want people to take are and what exactly, how exactly they want to interact with uh, your website. When I was a kid, that, we used to have these books that you could get at the library called Choose Your Own Adventures, where you could, at, at particular points in the story, you could uh, choose to go left or go right down, down a hypothetical road. As our business owner and as our website creators, what we want to do is we want to lay out that entire story. So it's not a choose your own adventure for your for clients. It's a specific story that you're going to tell again and again and again. Fourth, uh, have great search engine optimization filled in on your website. Things like page titles, things like descriptions of both uh, of both. Uh, pages and of photos. Make sure you have relevant headings and alt tags, everything included. If you don't know what those are, I'd encourage you to go back to the Busy Web Library. We have Dave Meyer did a great webinar uh, a while back on the basics of SEO. I'd encourage you to spend some time looking at that. If you're not, if you don't have the time to do that, I encourage you to give us a call. We'd be happy to, to give you uh, some basic tips on how to do that. The most important thing that we like to say here at BusyWeb, besides how do we generate buzz without getting stunned, is take people through a specific marketing message, which is we engage them, we inform, we capture information from them, and then we convert into business. Every single website needs to do this. Every single website needs to have those the four things as well as the, the other uh, four points that we mentioned above so that your website will be a tool and will actually have some forward momentum for you so that you can actually do a thing, not just have a website that's basically a brochure. There's no point in that. We want to make sure that everything we do has a purpose and has, gives us some forward momentum. So as we're talking about e-commerce sites, we, we need to take it up a step and talk about, about a B2C site. B2C stands for business to consumer, which is exactly what an e-commerce site is. This is a, 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 the next level down as we're talking about websites. This is what any B2C, good B2C site would need. The first thing is we want to have action-oriented content. We want to talk about who we are and how we serve our clients not how our clients serve us. How, what is the pain point that you can solve by somebody exchanging money for a service or a good from you? If you, if you sell drill bits, you really don't sell drill bits. You sell the opportunity to create holes. So if you're selling a drill bit, what you get to, to offer your clients and what, how you serve them is by offering a really great hole. Third, uh, relevant posts copy that matches the search uh, hi and highlights your strengths and interest visitors, that gives you the opportunity to continue to have that story and continue to demonstrate that you are what you say you are, which is a unique person with unique products and a great service wow experience that they're going to get from you and nowhere else. Next, we want to make sure that any design that we have is very approachable and incredibly easy to navigate. When you have things like a hierarchy of products, you want to make sure that they're available in several different places and several different forms so that as your people, as your customers who are coming to you want to search for them, they don't have to go through a specific functionality. You want to tell them a specific story, but you want to give them many different options because everybody's styles are a little different. And finally, as you have uh, particular 
high dollar products and high margin products, you want to make sure that you can have those on specific landing pages to, to encourage people to come in to that as a way to open the door and make sure that all of your content is optimized there. So what are some of the challenges that we're going to face when we create and we are managing a, a, an e-commerce website? Well, a B2C website is all about action. We want people to come. We want people to do things. We want to make sure that they know exactly what they need to do, that they don't get distracted by shiny things that we have, and have on our website. So having our clear, clear calls to action are crucial. Second, the, there's, it's a tendency to think of as, as a numbers game. We want to make sure that we have a lot of visitors, a lot of leads. The more people we have coming into our store, the more people we're going to have buy from us. We're never going to reach 100% buying. If so, that means you only have two customers. For having a lot of customers, we want to make sure that we get as many people through the door as possible. So in order to do that, having social integration is very, very key. 70% of all people in this day and age statistically will ask for input on a social media website before they make a purchase. How many times have you ever seen on a web, on your social media site something that a friend asks, something as simple as, do you know a really great plumber that I can work with? That's somebody who wants to, uh, to leverage their relationship with you and their trust factor with you into making a purchase. Similarly, as a business, we want to be able to establish that trust factor. We want to do it in a way that a lot of people can see us treating people well and treating people at a high level. We also want to make sure that we are providing people a high value. By and large, nobody purchases something from somebody they don't like or have no interest in unless you're purchasing something from the cable company. We want to make sure that the high value interactions we have, meaning uh, that we're trustworthy, that we're providing more than just a place to buy things, uh, is integrated into our website. And finally, the most crucial part is, as I've been using the store analogy, that uh, is, is so much more difficult when we're dealing with a B2C website or even an e-commerce website, is how do you develop a relationship with somebody without actually meeting them, without actually looking at them face to face? and growing that relationship through asking them questions like, what do you need? Well, how exactly can I de identify the pain point? So we'll talk a little bit a little about that. The most crucial thing as we're working on our e-commerce site is the idea that we are going to be have no relationship with somebody, but we are going to be taking their money. So there are a couple of things that you absolutely crucially must add to make sure that you are officially 100% being as safe as possible. First thing is you want to prefer, purchase an SSL, that's a secure socket license, and that what that gives you is, I provided a picture there of something as simple as changing the HTTP to an HTTPS. That means there's a secure connection between that individual's computer and your server, so nobody can break into that. Similarly, to make sure that uh, you are being as secure as possible, you want to provide a static IP address. Those are about $100 a, a year. It's absolutely crucial when you are uh, setting up your e-commerce engine. Finally, the, the biggest thing that I can tell you when, it, when, when we're dealing with taking people's money and you're not going to have that relationship with them is optics are critical. You want people to feel as safe as possible, so take as few steps as possible when you are asking people for money and there is the exchange of money. Make it as uh, easy as possible from a design perspective. So we're going to get through my nine e-commerce essentials, the, the things that you need to do to make sure that you are providing a really great buying experience for people. So first, I would tell you to blog early and blog often. Blogs are something you should be able to interact within your website relatively easy, easily, and you want to give your audience the opportunity to know who you are, why you do what you do, your pedigree, and why they should buy from you. Not just one time, but over and over and over again. In this particular instance, I've shared a picture of a company that we work with here at BusyWeb called Own Your, Own Your Vocal Journey.com. These are two classically trained opera singers that are incredibly rare. They're one of the few in the world that are actually have the ability to sing the way they do. And they're providing an ebook on their website 
where they can teach you some of the, their vocal techniques so you can become a, a better, better singer. So I encourage you to look at that, but in doing so, especially in something as intimate as learning how to sing, you want to make sure that your coach and your singing teacher actually truly has those chops. So having things like video of the people singing is really going to help ensure that that buying experience is great. Second, uh, create an awesomely easy navigation for multiple product purchases. You're never going to have a store with just one thing in it. You're going to have many different things. You're going to have complementary things. So one of the things that the folks that own your vocal journey.com are going to be doing is they're going to be offering online vocal coaching where they have Skype sessions and help work with you on how to improve your voice. So they don't just have a book that they're selling on how to do on how to become a better singer. They have multiple things that they can do. Third, make sure that you follow up with email and entice your part, your customers to keep in touch. You've, already, you've provided them a great experience. You've provided them with a wonderful product. You want to make sure that you keep your products and services top of mind so that anyone who is, has purchases from you will tell other people and make sure that they're actually going through the process. So that's one through three. Four through six is you want to offer what Amazon doesn't. Amazon is a great big giant service that sells literally everything under the sun. Can you do the same? Probably not without billions of dollars to catch up. So offer specific things that are helping people in a specific way. So if you're going to sell uh, light fixtures, make sure that, that everything that you sell is perfect to just selling light, light fixtures. And make sure you use high quality unique descriptions so that people are realizing that it's not just a feed from somewhere else and they're buying from a middleman. They want to buy from you. They don't want to buy from a great big conglomerate that they don't understand. This is a website that I pulled off that has absolutely no unique descriptions or any high quality descriptions at all. So I don't really know what this is. I don't really know how, why I would buy a satin nickel thing other than my interior decorator or my significant other would tell me so. Sixth, I want you to make sure that you allow user generated content. What exactly do I mean by that? It's mostly in the, in the, in the scenario reviews because you want somebody who's had a good experience with you and knows how to use the product actually lay that out for the people involved. So if I want a, a torque wrench, I want to know, I, I want to ha offer the opportunity for somebody who's used that torque wrench and bought that torque wrench from me before to say what it's good at and maybe that, that and, and what kind of jobs they're good at so that anybody purchasing it will look and see maybe this is good for my just the one job that I need it for, but maybe there are other applications as well. I talked a little bit earlier about the difference between doing what you think is relevant and what your customers thinks, think are relevant. This is a perfect opportunity for you to allow your customers to interact with you and further your mission by telling other people how they used your products sensibly and appropriately so that, or even inappropriately really, as long as they buy, so that they continually have a good experiences coming back to you over and over and over again. So we're hitting through the stretch run. Uh, my seventh best practice is offer free help through content. If you buy something on Amazon or if you buy something even from this particular retailer, uh, what do you go with it? What, what goes with it? What are the other things that I would want to buy? How do I install it? Maybe I'm just really, truly terrible and don't know how to install a light switch. How do I do that? What are the best practices in order to do that? Is there a video available to me? Well, if so, share that information because if you share uh, some information on what exactly you do with a purchase, chances are that customer is going to actually do the thing and they're going to feel validated for their purchase because you explain to them how exactly you use it. And that builds trust and that's going to build resales over and over and over again. Eighth, be sure to be up to date. If you're offering discount products that are a couple years old, make sure you clearly say that 
but if you're offering newer models, you want to make sure that you are cutting edge. When you're dealing in a comp competitive market like comparing to Amazon, you might have uh, get beaten on the punch. So you want to make sure that what you are offering is unique and it's the most up-to-date thing that you can offer. And finally, and this is my last shot at, at, at the big Amazon, uh, chances are good. There are going to be other places in, in, on the Internet where uh, they're going to beat you on price. The goal here is not to have the lowest possible price because realistically, as small business owners, we're never going to have the, the, the lowest price. But what we can provide is, is great service. And we can show how we are providing really great service. So make sure that you have all of those nine pra best practices built in so that you uh, can, uh, can grow your business through e-commerce. So a couple of things I do want to say, I do want to mention as you are creating your online store. First of all, you will need to spend some time uh, implementing a search engine optimization strategy. However, it does take time to work. There's no way in which you could start doing search engine optimization and then the next day make a million dollars. You want to make sure that you give yourself a good three to six months to really start seeing results. And second, uh, keep in mind that you are going to have to have a marketing budget to dra proactively drive traffic into your store. If I were to open a hypothetical store, that's not going to get people to come in the door. I am going to have to attract them and give them a reason to come in. And the same holds true when you have an online store. To get people to come in, get people to share, uh, and give them the opportunity to do so. But you are going to have to, to not skimp on your marketing budget to make that happen. Third, similarly, uh, here in Minnesota, uh, one of the things that we run into a lot is people who have tried social media but hasn't, haven't received 100% result on it, and so they, they abandon it. Much like SEO, social media does take some effort. You want to make sure that you are continuously adding new content. You are trying to engage and inform your potential customer base before you convert them. So make sure that you do, are spending about 15 to 20 minutes a day, three to five days a week on your social media efforts. If you are interested in learning more about how to have an effective social media uh, plan in place, we are doing a webinar tomorrow at 11 for uh, SCORE Minnesota here in, in Minnesota about how, the best practices for social media, kind of a social media 101 and social media 102. And I encourage you, you can find that on busyweb.com slash events if you'd like to join. Fourth, keep in mind that you can't throw up a website and call it good. You can't have a store which you don't sweep out, give re regular maintenance to, change the light bulbs now and again. Make sure that you do have a plan in place for regular maintenance, regular updating, a fresh coat of paint every couple of years so that you are providing the best face possible and the best customer interface so you don't want your store to be dusty. And lastly, marketing is measurement. Make sure that everything that you do and every link that you have has an analytical tool associated with it so you can know exactly how your customers are coming into the store, how they're interacting with the store, what are they purchasing, at which point are they shaking their head and walking away. You can learn all of that if you include a really good analytics tool. We recommend Google Analytics. It's free. It's a great tool to be able to uh, learn a lot of different things. Again, keep in mind you're not in your hypothetical story, you're not behind the cash register. So you're going to have to learn how people are coming in and what, they're, what exactly they're doing. When you're building a store and really any sort of uh, business at all, you want to make sure that you're using all the right tools at your disposal to be able to grow your business. So. Here at BusyWeb, when we build a website for our clients, we found that the best and effective way, most effective way that we can do that is anytime our, our customer updates their website, it will auto post to all of their social, social networks. And they can even specifically choose what thing goes to what network. So if you're offering a deal, you might want to have that only go to Facebook. If you want offering thought leadership, you might want to have that only go to LinkedIn. If you're just trying to, to grow your ranking as much as possible, putting a lot of things on, on Google Plus uh, is, is very helpful. And Twitter is incredibly helpful for a lot of short updates and headlines and tips. So you can get people to spend about two seconds reading something, 
learning something and moving on. All of these, depending upon your business, have different value propositions. Some of them work for everyone. Some of them need to work only for specific, specific businesses. So, but make sure that if you do have these tools in play, that you are utilizing them, they are doing something for your business. Don't just have a hammer that's sitting there. You need to have your hammer swinging and hitting nails. So it looks like other than Obed was wishing me uh, good luck today, which thanks Obed for that. I appreciate that. We uh, don't have a lot of questions, so I'll, I'll pause for a moment to see if anybody actually does have a question that I can answer for them. And I'm going to switch. I'm not going to switch back because I don't want to screw that up. So <clears throat> if you do, I'd encourage you, again, if you do have a question, you can reach us here at busyweb.com or you can email me directly at trigve, T-R-Y-G-V-E, at busyweb.com. But more importantly, there's a, there's a phone number down at the bottom. Probably best to call me than try and figure out how to, how to spell my name. So we've been talking about e-commerce websites, the nine best practices to really make a, an impactful store online that you can make some make good money at and make good, good processes through. So uh, one more uh, quick, quick plug for us here at BusyWeb. We are experts in web design and development. We can create that store for you if you're still thinking about it or if your store's not making as much money as you think it should. We'll be able to help you with that. We'll be able to help you have some strategies that will effectively uh, grow your business. So I, if you look at ownyourownvocaljourney.com, uh, just where they've come in, in a week's time is uh, truly amazing. They're doing really great work. And uh, I'd like to say that a lot of that came from some of the uh, counsel that we've given them here and some of the work that we've helped put in on the website as well. We also host websites. I spoke a little bit about making sure that you have a maintenance plan in place for uh, for having uh, for your website. Having a really great host is going to be a fantastic way in, in which you do that. Uh, our hosting packages have a sting-free guarantee. That's because we do all the maintenance for you and we do all the software software updates for you. So uh, we had a uh, we, we had a uh, question come in from uh, from Obed. He asked, "What are the best ways to try the sharing pl plugins that cost money before paying for them?" Well, I encourage you to think about that in a couple of different ways. Number one, make sure that you have the technical ability, or at least have a really good friend that you can talk to that can help you if you, there's no directions that come with it. Much like trying to put together a crib where all the all the directions are in French. Sometimes it helps to have a French speaker. Second of all, make sure that you have an idea of what the, the refund policy is so it, that if it doesn't work for you, you can actually get your, get your money back. Third, we have a couple of plugins that we use for our clients here. If you're interested in knowing what those are, I encourage you to reach out to me offline and be more than happy to share you that list with them. So, uh, back to us, one, at, at BusyWeb, we also have a number of online marketing strategies that we employ to help our clients grow their business and uh, really create uh, uh, great engines that are marketing oriented but really help convert customer, clients into customers and people who are kicking the tires into actually driving away with the car. That's metaphorical. We don't actually work with a lot of car dealers, so but you get the point. This has been our busy webinar, and if uh, you like this webinar, I'd encourage you to come back next Wednesday at noon, uh, and we're going to be going, uh, we, and you can go to busyweb.com slash events to be able to share uh, in, in the, the glory that is busy uh, our, our busy webinars. Next week, Dave is probably going to be back, so you're going to be able to have somebody who's much more technologically on point than I am, So, but at least hopefully I was a little bit entertaining. If you can't make it Wednesday at noon, each week's event is posted to YouTube. So after this is done, I'm going to post our, our event to YouTube. And you, you can ask questions. This is a, a valuable resource we want to be able to offer to you so that you can get some tech support and learn about new trends in the industry. So I encourage you, if you like this, come back next week or even come back tomorrow for our SCORE seminar about Social 101 and 102. 
finally, as a, as a gift for uh, putting up with me and Jenna as we worked out the technical glitches to start, I'd encourage you to go to busyweb.com slash buzz. We're going to give you a free buzz report that will is about a 10-page report on the efficacy of your website. We'll tell you what's going well, what you can improve on, what kind of grade we would give you, and how you could grow and, uh, and make your website be at that 100% level. It takes about two minutes time. It's absolutely free, uh, it's, and it's a fantastic way to really get a handle on what you're doing right and what you need to work on. So I'd encourage you, uh, again, as a thank you for putting up with me today, uh, go to busyweb.com slash buzz to get, a, to get your buzz report. Thanks for joining us here at BusyWeb. If you'd like to get a hold of us or you'd like to look, take a look at anything that we could do to help you, it's at BusyWeb.com. My name is Trigby. I had Jenna sitting in with me today. Say goodbye to the folks, Jenna. Bye. And we'll see you next week.